The reason why um, political orthodoxy becomes so dangerous and you get all this strange stuff happening is because political orthodoxy then, or any kind of orthodoxy, activates the psychology of sacredness. So I'm, I study morality and the origins of morality. I'm very interested in cooperation, uh, the origins of cooperation. There are almost no species on earth that are able to cooperate in large groups. Bees are great at it. Of course, their trick is that they're all sisters. They're all in the same boat genetically. Uh, this is a, a termite mound in Australia. Again, same trick. So nature discovered this way of creating ultra-social species where millions can work together to build something huge. There's only one species on Earth that can do it without being siblings, and that's humans. So this is uh, Babylon, uh, and this is, uh, this is Tenochtitlan. And what, what we find in the archaeological record is that wherever, <clears throat> wherever there is civilization, it starts with temples, or at least the record begins with temples. Um, and the reason I believe we always start with temples is that humanity's great trick, our evolutionary trick over the last million or so years, half million or so years, I'd say, um, is we evolved a psychology of sacredness. We evolved to be religious. And that means if we circle around something, we then make that thing sacred and then we can trust each other. So this is straight from Emile Durkheim. I take this straight from Emile Durkheim, the sociologist, I think one of the greatest social scientists uh, ever. And so these are Muslims circling the Kaaba in Mecca. And as they circle, you know, if you take, a, if you take a, a wire and you move it through a magnetic field, you generate electricity, the capacity to do work, a polarity. And Durkheim used that metaphor too. He said that social rituals generate social electricity. And then the group can function as one, they can work together, they can fight uh, against other groups. So that's our great trick. And we do this all the time. It's not just, not just uh, um, gods and, and manifestations of God. So the flag, the flag becomes sacred, especially during wartime. Soldiers circle around it, and then they will risk their lives for each other. So what is sacred at a university? I mean, what do we circle around? This is uh, Raphael's School of Athens. What are, they, what are they trying to do there? Well, obviously, I mean, it's right there on the crest. Veritas, that's right. Isn't that, that's what's sacred at a university, right? That's the most important thing for us, right? We circle around that. But my argument is that what has been happening since the 1990s is there's been a change. The most sacred thing at a university is the victim. Not in all departments, not in the sciences, but in the social sciences, especially the humanities, the victim is the most sacred thing. Now, you can see this especially here. There are six groups of victims traditionally since the 90s. So most, when, whenever there are big political blowups and controversies, they tend to be around, around race issues, gender issues, or LGBT issues. Those are the big three. Um, there are three other groups that are sacred too, but there just seems to be less controversy around uh, Latinos, Native Americans, and disability status. They all matter, but, but th these are, I believe, the six sacred groups since I joined the academy uh, in, the, in, the in the 90s. The last two years have been extraordinary because there's been a revolution just in two years. We've added a seventh group. So now Muslims in many, it depends on the school, but at some schools, Muslims are now in the sacred category. So any criticism of Islam or of Muslims can't be done. Um, transgender issues have rocketed from, uh, from obscurity a couple of years ago to the front line uh, of campus uh, politics now. And of course, Black Lives Matter, since we all saw those, those horrible videos beginning in 2014 of, of unarmed black men being killed. Um, so there's a huge amount of moral passion and it comes onto campus and it is transforming the life of the university. You know you're in the presence of sacredness when any little thing, any little affront or insult elicits a huge reaction. So if somebody on campus were to use an American flag or a Bible in an art project, maybe they put it on the floor, maybe they mix it with something. Do you think that would be okay? Well, you know, it happens, but for people on the right, it's very easy to see this for conservatives. The flag and the Bible are sacred. Any little thing is, you know, is blasphemy, is, is, is treason. Those are sacred objects. Um, you can also see it on the left, obviously, civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King is a hero. Um, each side has their sacred objects, people, images, ideas. And again, this is just normal human groupishness. This is what groups do. Um, but as you circle around your sacred objects on your team, and you generate this electricity, you get a polarizing effect so that our side is on the side of the angels. Our motives are good, our motives are pure. Even if we're wrong about things here and there, we meant well. We're the good people. They, their motives are so evil. Even if they ever were accidentally right, it doesn't matter because their, their intentions are so bad. 